Um, wanted to get some facts straight. Um, I'm not an expert in business intelligence. Um, I think there are definitely people more qualified to give this webinar than me right now, but um, I volunteered. Um, I'm not an, an, excuse me, an evangelist um, for any particular product. Um, that's why I'm going to show two in particular, one ArcGIS product in operations dashboard and another a Microsoft product called Power BI. This is not meant to be an instructional step-by-step -step on how to solve your business needs. Um, this is more or less going to be an overview on the tools and a way to get started to um, basically glean out um, data from your databases or your GIS resources. Um, VCGI is not paying me for this webinar, and I also perform all of my own stunts. So now that I have set the bar very low, what is business intelligence? Um, business intelligence is a set of techniques and tools for the transfer, uh, transformation of raw data into meaningful and useful information for business analysis purposes. And basically what that means is it's, it's just making sense of all of the data that um, you either collect or create, analyze, or get from other resources. Now we also have this um, notion of location intelligence, which is the process of deriving meaningful insight from geospatial data relationships to solve a particular problem. And you know, I, I think there are some GIS professionals on um, this webinar that use location intelligence um, all the time for for our work. Um, but this idea of business intelligence is taking it one step further and using those locations to um, solve issues or, um, you know, talk about goals or, or setting bars to reach those goals. Now, how does the Agency of Natural Resources use business intelligence? Um, we use it in different ways. Um, a lot of them um, are consuming data that is collected out in the field. This is just a very, very basic operations dashboard for um, beaver device installations. So um, basically those gates that you see on the edges of culverts to keep beavers from crossing or um, to help them um, migrate from one body of water to the other without um, damming the, the water. So um, this is just a dashboard. It's actually a series of different pages that show um, the number of devices that we have currently installed and um, the effectiveness of them. <clears throat> so this <laughs> this is a, a little uh, slide that shows uh, the summary of what some of that business intelligence is. And in this case, we have 240 beaver management devices installed statewide impacting over 4,000 acres of wetlands. Um, five of these devices need replacement. And here you can see, now we're thinking about beavers. And this is the Microsoft Power BI example. Um, this is uh, forest parks and recreation infrastructure um, for uh, all of our units. We're a unit we refer to as a particular FPR land. In this case, this is summarizing culverts and that we have 267 culverts across um, FPR managed lands. Uh, and then you can get an idea of um, their condition, the capacity, and also the various materials that are used across those state forests and uh, state parks. So in summary, uh, forest parks and recreation have 260 culverts on 267 culverts on state land. 171 of them are in good condition, and 24 need to be replaced. And now he's thinking about how he wish he didn't skip lunch. So um, ANR's business intelligence stack, if you will, or the the software that we use for um, coming up with these dashboards or these um, analytics to solve these business intelligence needs, um, basically starts with ArcGIS desktop. And from there, we're creating data that we are either collecting out in the field or editing, or could be pulling from other databases within the agency um, that we want to summarize. Um, we use ArcGIS Collector for all our field data editing. Um, we find that it's um, a great tool. It's free for us um, to use to um, get that information from out in the field. Um, and we serve that through um, ArcGIS 
server, we also have RTIS online, although um, we use server for our data hosting um, that we get from RTIS. Um, RTIS online then hosts those particular endpoints that we get from RTIS server. Um, from there, we, um, we're using both Microsoft Power BI with our Office 365 entitlement, um, as well as RTS Operations Dashboard. And we use um, here at the Agency of Natural Resources, ASP.NET, for our end user applications. So what is the general workflow um, that we use for creating these dashboards or these business, for these business intelligence tools? Um, I'll start off with operations dashboard. Um, this is an ArcGIS platform product. Um, um, basically start off with a map that we publish in ArcGIS Online. Um, in this case, um, I'm demonstrating um, one of our urban tree inventories that was done by the Urban Community, Community Forestry Program. They went out into various communities using a collector app that we built to inventory trees within um, certain village and town right-of-ways. Um, so I'm gonna actually skip out and I'm gonna open up one of these maps and I'll use, um, I guess I'll keep using Linden as an example, um, one of the more recent inventories and maps that we had created. Um, and we can show this in a map viewer. Um, this basically gets published out um, using one of our feature services um, and is then consumed into collector, but all of that information is being filtered through ArcGIS server. So the endpoint for this urban tree inventory, if I go to the description, should go and point to one of our, um, our REST service endpoint for ArcGIS server. Um, this one is obviously um, locked down because this is the editable, um, editable map that we'll be using for this demonstration. Um, <clears throat> within the map, um, I've already applied a filter, which is going to filter out um, this village's urban tree inventory, um, you know, this attribute table that will store all of the information for these. So in this case, it looks like there's over almost 300 trees that were inventoried at this location. Um, and then we can also, if I click the, the filter for whatever reason, it actually ends up taking forever to, to pull that filter up because it's a large data set. But um, just wanted to demonstrate that um, in some cases, it's nice to pre-filter the data that you'll be using in your business intelligence tools. <clears throat> so from there, we're able to go directly to um, our operations dashboard. And this is a product that you can download directly from ArcGIS. Um, it does require an ArcGIS online organizations account. So it's not unfortunately available for the ArcGIS online freebie accounts. You need to have an organization license to, to use operations dashboard. Um, so I think we're just gonna go ahead and create a new operations view in here. Um, you have the option to create a single display or you can use a multi-display. So what that means is that the widgets that you create that will show those, um, those um, the data that comes from this map um, can either be limited to a single screen or you can actually disperse them across multiple screens. Um, so for the purpose of the demonstration, I think I'll just keep it to a single display, seeing as though you can only see one display at a time anyway. <clears throat> so now it's, um, it's asking me for the map that I will be using for drawing the information from. And um, in here, this, these are all the folders that we have um, storing maps and data. Um, these will be in our urban tree inventory folder. And then I think we're gonna, yeah, we'll, we'll use the Linden urban tree map. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this. It's gonna ask me for those credentials because this is a feature service that is um, locked down in ArcGIS server. Into that. And immediately we have um, the map data as a data source. Um, that we can then use for this particular application. Um, so let's do, let's click OK. So the first widget that's going to pre-populate is the map. So in this case, it's exactly way, the way it looked like in ArcGIS Online. Um, and then from here, I can then 
adjust the different capabilities of the map. So um, if I want people to, you know, to pan to a certain feature, or zoom to a certain feature, um, I also want to be able to see the feature pop up. So I'm going to enable that as well so that when I click on any one of these features within the map, it will bring up a pop-up um, that explains what exactly this is. So um, the pop-up would obviously be configured within the ArcGIS online map um, and, and automatically shows the attachments for any uh, features that have attachments enabled for them. So in this particular case, the urban tree inventory um, photograph trees that were, uh, I believe, in either fair or poor condition, and, and of course, if they were dead. Um, <clears throat> so what I want to all what I want to do now is um, I want to actually show you how we add widgets. So in this case, um, I'm going to show you kind of a um, a functionality issue that I think is with um, with operations dashboard, and that is um, coming up with um, summaries. So this is just a summary widget. It's going to show a particular summary of a value. In this case, if we just wanted to show um, the total number of trees that Linden had um, inventoried, um, we can just go ahead and choose our data source here. Um, we'll call this total number of trees and total trees. This is going to be a count. And it's basically a count of all of features within this um, particular um, map. So I click OK. There we go. 285 total trees within uh, in this inventory. But the issue begins is, well, we also want to know how many dead trees there are in Linden. So if I go to Add Widget and choose Summary, I'm not able to um, basically pull out a query here initially. What I need to do is I need to go up to my, my map settings and I add what are called filters. So in this case, I'm going to add a filter to this particular map um, where um, the uh, we have dead trees. So anything is dead. Um, and then uh, I need to add a particular field. So I'm going to do um, species is dead, and then I want, um, I don't want to show tree sites that are vacant, um, so that's not going to be very valuable, so, um, so let's do species is not equal, or excuse me, um, condition, no, let me, let me see what I got here, so I got condition, specify, I want dead, that is, let's do, I want all of them that are dead. So let's see, let's do dead trees. And I need town, let's do this. Town is equal to Linden. This should give us what we need. Now, these are all attributes within the attribute table of um, the urban tree inventory. So if I choose uh, OK there. Um, so I also want to add vacant plant sites. So I need to know where all of the trees uh, are vacant. So I'm just going to go ahead and pre-populate these filters now. Um, so I'm going to also do um, town is Linden here. Type is vacant, add. So now here's our query. Um, and I'm also interested in knowing where all of the ash trees are in Linden, because we know that the emerald ash borer is an issue. And those might be trees that we're interested in protecting or perhaps going back and identifying um, later to see if they are showing any signs of um, emerald ash borer. So I actually need to change the name of this query to vacant. Okay, right, nope, vacant town equals Linden. Yep, that's good. And then um, we're going to do ash. So um, the type in this case, so the types are, these, this is a condition field. I'm interested in any condition, but I'm interested in species equaling 
um, ash. So ash add, but I'm not interested in just ash. There's also green ash and white ash. So let's add those as well. So those, that's not an and operation. This is an or operation. I want any of these. For all types, I want ash, white ash, and green ash. Let's click OK. And I keep forgetting to name it. Uh, this is going to be ash. OK. So now we have our filters that we can use for um, creating these widgets within the map. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, let's add a species distribution. We're interested in how many species are within the map. Um, so I'm going to add a widget. Let's add a bar chart. <clears throat> so I'm going to call this species distribution. We're not going to use any of our filters. We're interested in all the trees within this inventory. Um, and I'm not going to give it a description either. So let's do, um, we want, we want to display feature counts as bars and we're interested in species. We're going to sort by frequency. That's fine. We're going to sort in ascending order. And we need to, this is an interesting thing. So like the, all of the values are, are, um, are given back to the server. Um, and in this case, the application. So um, this is limiting the number of um, results that come back from the server. So we don't want to limit um, all of the species in this case. Um, and I'm not sure how to aggregate within this. I don't, I think that is a limitation that I can't aggregate just the maples together or say the ash together. They show up as specific species within this, this bar chart. <clears throat> so minimum, maximum appearance. Let's do layout. Okay. Let's just see how this looks when we click OK. And it's going to be crazy because there's so many species in this map. And this is when having um, a multi-screen um, application um, makes more sense. Because right now, um, what I need to do is I need to create a new page for this particular widget because um, there's simply too much to show in that particular um, widget. So I'm going to insert a panel. And in this case, let's do um, a full page. Um, and I think, let's go back here. And I want to move this to the next panel. There we go. And it's still going to be way too small. So this is not a good widget for this particular application. And this is, as you can see, going to be one of the limitations um, of operations dashboard is that I'm not able to, to really move this around and I don't have very good control over um, where these widgets go. But I'm going to continue. I wanted to show a few other summaries and I know I only have half an hour, so uh, I kind of need to move along. So I'm going to show another summary uh, and use one of those filters that we set up. Um, so in this case, I'm going to choose summary widget Let's do, let's use our dead trees summary. So let's give this dead trees. And we're going to do a count. Um, so it's going to count all of the um, features that satisfied that filter that we set up. Um, we can change this to a number or, uh, excuse me, a different color. In this case, it's red because they're dead. It's kind of a bad thing. Um, so in this case, there are only three dead trees in Linden, which is which is actually actually great. So um, we can let's add a couple more widgets here. Um, we can let's add another panel. Um, let's do it. Let's get rid of this one. This one doesn't make any sense for this. And let's add a, a pie chart. And what we can do is we can use all of our trees. We're going to give this um, a condition. So this will be our condition assessment. Um, we're going to do display feature counts. And we're going to use condition. Um, this is another limitation <laughs> of Operation Dashboard is I can't really control how it's um, 
I can't assign a color to a particular value. Um, in this case, um, it, it puts good as a particular, you know, a shade of green. But you see poor is still green, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, somebody might be able to fill me in on how to specify the actual colors for um, conditions. Um, but I don't know of a way. So if I add the pie chart, um, what's kind of cool about this is I can um, go ahead and click the, the pie chart and just show um, should filter out just the port uh, condition trees over here. Um, and you can do that with feature interactions. So I'm going to move on. Um, so this is operation dashboard. I think that quickly goes over um, what happens or how to set up an operation dashboard um, using an, uh, an ArcGIS online map. I um, also kind of went over some of the um, some of the issues with it, um, if you will. And I'll, I'm going to jump right in here to um, Microsoft Power BI and kind of show how Power BI kind of picks up where Operations Dashboard leaves off. Um, but there are some limitations in, in Power BI as well. Um, with Power BI, you have two different versions. There's a desktop and a web version. Um, desktop um, allows you to access enterprise DBs, so like uh, SQL Server. Um, you can access web services that are hosted through, say, Azure SQL. Um, we are also, I'm also going to give a quick example of how we might hook up Power BI to a map service. Um, it's a little clunky, but um, we can get there with a little bit of work. Um, like I said, it has on-premise DB report publishing. It requires a personal gateway, but we can um, refresh data that comes from an enterprise DB using it. Um, it has better control over queries over the web version. Um, I'll show you that. And you're able to create these um, Power BI projects, PBIX projects that are similar to MXDs. Um, with the web version, the data sources need to be web services if publishing to the web. Um, enterprise DBs can be published with web. I think you need Power BI Pro to do it, though. Um, the web version is totally editable. editable. Um, the visualizations um, work just as they do in desktop, which is pretty neat. Um, sharing and collaboration is pretty easy um, with the web. So kind of similar to ArcGIS Online, you're able to share um, those um, visualizations with the public. Um, and then um, the one thing worth noting, though, is what I'm going to show is um, Arc, there's an ArcGIS map um, visualization, and that's not supported with web sharing. So um, you're able to publish the, the visual to the web, but it, the minute you try and share it with someone um, is when it becomes an issue. So so which one, which one are we going to choose? I'm actually just out of the interest of time going to show you um, Power BI Desktop. Um, this is an example here of a um, Power BI um, visualization that I did for FPR lands. So here you'll see um, a series of um, basic, like those summaries that we saw in Operations Dashboard that are returning counts, um, as well as um, an attribute table. Um, in, in here we'll show um, number of barriers for a particular unit and this drop down is a filter so if I'm only interested in showing those barriers from Groton State Forest I can choose that drop down and it's going to filter those to that particular um, forest and actually um, zoom to the particular area within um, within that unit uh, and then we can come up with different summaries and um, in this case I'm showing culverts the, um, or excuse me, infrastructure conditions um, broken out by the particular piece of infrastructure. And like I said, these are just um, queries or um, summaries for those queries um, inserted within the application. So um, I'm going to go ahead and create um, a new Power BI um, project and show you how I did this. Um, well, it's going to have to be pretty quick, but um, I think we can get there. So I'm going to start a new project. It's going to ask me where I want to get my data. Um, in this case, I'm likely going to just go to our own SQL server and pull data out of a tab um, the table that we're using that's serving up that uh, urban tree inventory application. So I'm going to choose Get Data. Um, in this case, um, and it's asking me where I want to get the data. 
Uh, in this case, it's a SQL Server database. It's going to ask me where the server is. In this case, that's our SQL database server. Um, and I know I actually know the database name, so I'm just going to type it in. So it's Forest and Parks. <clears throat> My using Windows authentication in this case to open up the table. Um, and here is my, um, the view that contains all of the information for that urban tree inventory. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this. So now it's pulling all of that data into this project. Um, the, over on the left-hand side, you have different um, columns. So these are different views. One is the report view and the other is the data view. Um, so I'm gonna go over to the data view. And from here, I'm going to be able to pick um, the fields that I'd like to um, either include or un not include. And I can do that by choosing the home and I'm gonna edit this particular query. So in here, I can choose my columns using the choose columns um, button. Of course, we have a bunch of different tools in here that we can use to manipulate the data. Unlike with operations dashboard, there's a vast array of different options that we can use to manipulate the data that would be used for these reports. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna go choose columns and I'm just gonna choose out the columns I'm interested in showing. Um, for the demo, so um, species, diameter class, um, the condition, um, let's see what else. Um, we're all obviously gonna want the latitude and the longitude. Um, we're gonna choose, I forget which one we need, the town and the town name, so I'm just gonna include them both. Um, the project, road number, road name, et cetera. So this is gonna modify the query for that particular view and just include that information that we're that we need. So um, in this case, uh, I think we have most of what we need. I don't know if I'm missing anything else, but if I am, I can go back to this choose columns um, um, button and then go ahead and, and add or remove any other um, columns. So I think I'm good there. Um, the only thing left to do now is filter by the town name. So in this case, I want to load all of the towns and I'm going to choose Linden. So this is basically filtering out um, all of the towns, or excuse me, all of the trees in this Linden inventory. So I'm gonna close and apply this. Now it's applying those query changes to the map or to my report where I can go in and now um, start adding information to this report uh, or visualizations, I should say. Um, in this case, um, obviously interested in a map. And how is it gonna map it? Well, with the latitude and the longitude, so I can add the lat and the long directly to the map and boom. There are all our features. They look like they're in the right place. Um, I can even go in and I can symbolize those um, points by their condition. I can change the color by their condition ID. Uh, and to edit those, I just click on the top right port corner of the map, choose edit. I can choose my base map. So I'm gonna use the street map. Um, you can choose different themes. In this case, I'm just interested in the location. Um, symbol styles, uh, it looks like it I just lost my color or my color by the condition. So I'm gonna redo this. Um, I can choose my colors for the different um, condition types. So good, fair, vacant, poor, let's make these red, dead, I guess it should be black. Um, so now you, you see that the, the um, information in the map is changing. If I had, I have a diameter class um, field um, but it is a text field. If I had a numeric field, I could drag this into the size field and I could adjust the symbol size based off the diameter class. But in the interest of time, I'm gonna go ahead and, and skip doing that. Um, I can add reference layers. So if I'm interested in adding um, a particular layer from ArcGIS Online, I can type it in. So I, I wanna add the, um, the village boundary. So if I type in Vermont village here, 
boom, look, I got all the open data that's coming in because this is tied directly to ArcGIS Online. So here you'll see village polygons. Go ahead and add that to the map. And it should add our um, the village of, of Lindenville in here as a, as a shaded polygon. Um, there we go. So I'm gonna zoom back in here. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to close this. Um, where are we? So this is one visualization. So I'm going to go back to my report. Um, I, can, I can size this however I want it. I can move it wherever I want it, which is certainly an advantage over um, operations dashboard. Um, I can add new visuals. I can add a text box. So in this case, I want to add a, a title. I'm going to call these linden urban trees and you can really go crazy with how you format all of the options within power bi um i also want to let's add let's add a pie chart so in this case um for the legend i want the condition i also want it for the values and um for filters, you can see, you can set different filters. So um, if you're only interested in showing, um, well, I'm not interested in showing vacant, or excuse me, um, not interested in showing the vacant conditions, um, nor am I interested in showing blanks. So I can just choose the conditions that I'm interested in showing. And as I said, um, as that was, a limitation with operations dashboard is that I couldn't change the colors for the particular data. Um, so in this case, I can for so for a good condition, I can change to a custom color. I can make that green to match my map. Um, fair was the was the yellow. Poor was red. Dead was black. So now the colors are are, are matching my map, which I think is uh which is helpful. Um, I can also create what's called a slicer visualization, which is kind of neat. Um, so if I'm in only interested in the conditions of a particular species, uh, I can do that. So I'm going to add, oh, oh geez, I just did something. Let's do undo. I want to add a new visual going too fast. A new visual, I need a slicer visualization. And in this case, the, um, the field that I want is species. So what this is going to allow me to do is check the condition for any particular tree species and then lim also limit that on the map. So I'm a, if I'm only interested in showing pine trees, in this case it looks like there's just two. Um, one's in good condition and one's in poor condition. This visualization is controlling what happens in my other visualizations, which is pretty pretty neat. And I can do that for a bunch of different um, tree species. So birch, box elder, blue spruce, et cetera. These are all um, filtering off of those. So if I hold the control key down, I can add multiple tree species. Or um, if I go into the settings, so these are the, um, the, format, the formatting of this particular visualization, I can um, have a select all option. So give me all of the trees. So that's how that one works. Um, let's see, how much more time? Am I almost out of time, Leslie? I think I am. If people are sticking with me, that's cool. I'll show a couple different vis more visualizations and then uh, probably try and finish up here. I did want to show kind of a cool um, bar chart. So let's do, I want to do, oh, let's see, I did it again. I need to add a new visual stack bar chart. And let's format this one. So for the axis, I want species. The legend, I want to be condition. The value is going to be the count of species. And then for filters, I want to add a filter for 
um, oh no, I'm not going to add a filter because I have um, my slicer up here. So uh, I do want to change the data colors again. So I, there's probably a way for me to set this so that I don't have to do this every time, but um, I just don't know right now. Um, but I think that needs to be black. Fair, orange, good is green. Poor was red. Vacant will do gray again. So here's um, here's an interesting um, stacked bar chart that's going to show um, the the count of conditions for each particular tree species, and it's very busy, just like that operations dashboard was. But in this case, I have the slicer up here, so I can choose different um, tree species to show in that chart. So, um, you know, I could have set up a filter for um, ash again, but uh, in this case, we only have green ash in Linden, and I can automatically see what the conditions are for those. Um, if I was interested in, um, say, crab apple, cherry plum, um, you know, whatever, red maple, silver maple, et cetera. This is building that stack bar chart. And look at how fast that was. I mean, we're setting up, um, you know, this is these are business intelligence visualizations that are instantly reporting the condition of those trees that are coming from these tree inventories that were done using ArcGIS a Collector. <clears throat> So um, obviously there's a ton of time that you can spend setting up visualizations in Power BI. I did want to show you a couple different ways in which you can share um, these projects. One is simply saving the project and it saves as a PBIX so you can send that to anybody that has Power BI desktop. But there's also a way to publish these, um, in these um, visualizations and reports to um, the web version, which is pretty handy. So it's going to ask me to save this, and I'm just going to save it as Linden Urban Trees. Hit enter, <clears throat> and it's publishing um, to a specific workspace. So if um, within your Office 365 account, if you're a member of different groups, you can share them with just different groups, a specific group. Um, in this case, I'll just share it with my own workspace. Now it's publishing that to my my web account. So now. Once that's done, I can then open up my Power BI account and look, it's already it's already ready. I can view my data set. Here's my report, Linden Urban Trees, and it shows up exactly as it does um, within my desktop. Um, I can even go in here and I can re-edit it. Um, so I can go edit report. And then I can also um, go ahead and, and share it with with other people um, by choosing the share option. So um, if I want to do that, it's only shared with me. Um, one question might be, you know, are these data sets, um, is it dynamic? So like as if we have editors out in the field using collector, um, is that gonna automatically be reflected in these um, report visuals? And the answer is yes and no. Um, to do that, we need to especially with the web version, we need to go down to our data sets and choose urban trees and then um, schedule refreshes. So you can schedule this information to be refreshed, um, but it, what it requires is um, a data gateway. And you can download the data gateway directly from Power BI. And what that does is it sets up a gateway between our SQL Server database and this web interface. And once that's done, it's online. I can then go in and um, it'll say, oops, your credentials aren't working. I can edit my credentials. I want to choose Windows authentication, sign in, boom, it's done. I can schedule it, keep my data up to date, refresh it daily, weekly. I can set a particular time, hit apply, and then within every day, um, it'll go in, it'll update this query that comes from our SQL Server database um, to reflect in these particular reports. Um, one final question might be, well, hey, you know, what if I want to access um, information that's published through, say, ArcGIS Server? Um, it's pretty, it's it's difficult. It can be done, um, but what we need to do is when you click uh, Get Data, we choose Web, and then 
what we'll do is we're going to add um, an endpoint from our REST query. Um, so this is the ArcGIS REST service endpoint. We're going to perform a query on urban trees. We're filtering out for the town of Linden. Um, it's important to choose your output spatial reference as 4326, which I believe is WGS 83, so that um, the spatial information that gets returned from these queries is done in decimal degrees Latin long. Um, and if I choose um, get, what it's going to do, um, I need to, uh, excuse me, I need to choose the JSON format as well. Click get, it's going to create a JSON query URL that I would use in Power BI. Um, this might take a second to generate. And then I can then take that, um, I put it into a decoder because uh, it actually gets encoded when um, you run that query. So I take the result of that query URL, throw it in my decoder, uh, and then come back to my Power BI and enter it in here as um, a URL, click OK. Now it recognizes this as um, a JSON endpoint with all of that information, I'm gonna click load. Um, it might take a second. Um, there's a little bit of reformatting I need to do with the um, how Power BI interprets the JSON. And if anybody's interested in doing this, you can send me an email and I can um, show you the way to reformat um, the JSON URL string that you'll need um, because it's not directly out of the box. And um, I would expect that a future version of Power BI will probably allow for ArcGIS REST service endpoints for um, data queries, because I mean, they do have the, the map visualization in here. They should have um, the, they should have um, an option for importing those um, particular queries. <clears throat> so I'm gonna edit my queries. I don't know if it, oh, it is in here. Um, so I went to, I need to back up because I'm going way too fast, but um, let me just close this and show you how I got here. Um, so this is the, the report tab. This is the data tab. Um, and then in the home panel, I chose edit queries. That's where I can edit all of this information. Um, and then you'll see that I now have two different queries here. The first one that came directly from SQL Server, and this is that JSON query. And what I need to do is I need to use the advanced editor and I need to change how this is formatted. So here I need to put json.document and at the end where pjson, that's the end of our um, JSON query call. I just need to add another parentheses here and delete everything else out. And then choose done. So what this does is it gives me a list of features, which I'm interested in. So I want this list of my features and I'm going to convert this to a table. So these are all of the records of that particular table. Should be, should be 285 of them, which we had 285 trees. So I'm going to choose this to a table. I don't need a delimiter. The first column is going to include attributes and geometry. Um, I clicked this little expand button up here, expand out the attributes and the geometry. So here are my attributes, let's expand these. In here, you'll select the columns that you want to include within your query. Um, so for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just gonna choose a couple. Um, it doesn't even matter, click okay. So now here are those attribute columns. And then for geometry, I'm also going to expand out the X and the Y. And the X and the Y is gonna include the latitude and the longitude and decimal degrees um, that we'll use for the population of the map. So from this, if I click close and apply, <clears throat> this is gonna take a second. Um, when I go back to the report, it's gonna show up as a, um, as a view or a query on the right hand side where I can input that, those data um, pieces into um, visualizations. So I kind of went through the pros and cons of both Power BI and Operations Dashboard. Power BI is more flexible for queries and data transformations, um, and it can access the Enterprise DB directly. Um, you have a lot more control over the look and feel. Um, 
with operations dashboard, it's it's a lot faster, but you are very limited in um, your widget controls. Um, there are support for attachments, which Power BI did not have. Um, can't see those pictures of those trees that people are out there taking. I'm sure there's a way to set it up, but it's not out of the box. Um, cons for Power BI, much steeper learning curve. Um, for services, data is not quote unquote live, but refreshed. And you know, web map services requires a, a JSON call to recurrent to return coded values. So I didn't really go over that, but um, with the with a query, you're not returning um, coded values. You're actually, or, or excuse me, the domains. You're just going to return back the coded values, which is not always helpful. Um, map functionality is a little limited in Power BI. Where um, pop-ups, for instance, are not um, not as well formatted is as an operations dashboard um, and then operations dashboard requires an online organization's account um, so I think I went over time by about 20 minutes so uh, I did talk really fast and I know that there's a lot more out there that um, we can we can present on this topic um, but I would um, very much recommend that um, someone who might have more experience in either one of these business intelligence solutions to to give a webinar because I do think that they are the way forward and you know with other platforms like Collector feeding into an operations dashboard um, for um, just being able to um, keep track of um, field data operations is very helpful so um, just wanted to have this webinar to hopefully spark um, further interest in business intelligence solutions and hopefully we can take the data that we're investing so much time and effort in to create these applications for data managers and um, leadership within, you know, with not only just state government, but across other businesses to um, get that information out to the end user for digestion. So um, with that said, um, thanks for thanks for listening. Um, hopefully you learn something and can get out there and explore uh, either of these options. So hope you get out and enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. You're not quite off the hook yet, Eric. Uh-oh, I got questions, don't well, I? Well, actually, no, there aren't any right this second, but I just want to uh, give people a chance to send them in if they're interested. I know um, a bunch of you have stuck with us even though we went over time, but if you do have questions, send them in now. Otherwise, we're going to let you go. <laughs> Uh, and by the way, uh, Ryan, um, Ryan Murphy said hi before he left. <laughs> that, oh, was, that was the only question I got. <laughs> sorry, I missed you, Ryan. Uh, hopefully you're still there. All right. Maybe you wowed them with. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just call it wowed and not like lulled <laughs> to sleep. <laughs> no, no, I don't think they were lulled to sleep. They were allowed to say that. Huh. All right. Well, hopefully everyone knows that if they have any questions, uh, hopefully they know how to get a hold of Eric. He's fairly easy to get a hold of, but if not, uh, you can always pass them along to me and I will make sure he gets them. Uh, and I do appreciate everyone who stuck with us. And I thought that was very interesting because I really haven't known much at all about what the point of all these uh, business intelligence tools was. So I feel educated. And I really appreciate you going into so much detail, Eric. Oh, yeah, no problem. Right. I was sweating it there for a little bit. You were talking kind of fast, but you got a lot in. <laughs> People can watch the YouTube video at a slower speed. It'll work. Oh, yeah. You're going to need the pause button in a few different spots. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody, and have a great day.